Good evening, YouTube. Matt M. Roy back once again. Boy, it seems like it's been a while since we had one of these live streams. This was not announced, so I'm going to go ahead and give uh, people a few minutes to uh, actually join this live stream. Let me go ahead and try to readjust my camera here a little bit. There we go. You guys can see I am actually wearing my Flash shirt. shirt. I'll go back a little bit. You guys can kind of see it right there. Being a little whimsical tonight. This is, what is this, Thursday, the 27th of September, 2018. It's a little after 7, just about the time I wanted to catch you guys. I figure a lot of people are going to be home at this point. Um, as the title is stated, this is uh, going to be all about what you need to know before selling or reselling on platforms like Craigslist, OfferUp. Um, let go next door. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Mayor C is another one, which I don't really use myself. Um, but it's something that's been on my mind for a while because, and I've gotten a lot of people asking me questions about this. Like, Matt, how do you resell on here? What is it safe to do? How do you do it? How do you go about getting started? I'm going to try to cover all of that in this live stream to the best of my ability. Um, this is not going to be anything tech related. So don't, don't ask me any tech related questions. I will not be answering them. This is all about, um, reselling. So without further ado, I'm going to get started for about the last six or seven years. I have been what they call a reseller. A reseller is somebody that buys products in one place, sells them in another, and hopefully in between that, makes a profit. In my case, you guys know where I get a lot of my stuff, uh, thrift stores, auctions, uh, liquidation sales, um, pretty much all that kind of stuff. Now, getting that stuff ready to be resold, it takes a little bit more than just getting the stuff, taking pictures and listing it. There's a lot of stuff involved in between. And I'm going to give a few examples here of um, at least how I do it. Say I get a computer in. Those Dell Optiplexes are a great example. I'll get those in. I literally physically clean those things out. I blow them out with the air compressor or canned air. I clean them inside and out, and then I fully refurbish the computer. I reload when, well, let's say I upgrade the computer, what needs to be upgraded, usually memory, hard drive, maybe video card. Then I reload Windows and pair it with a nice monitor, keyboard, mouse, and usually a set of speakers. That might take me five or six hours. Great. That computer's done, but that's only half the battle. Next part is I need to figure out how to sell it. So that's where your skills are really going to come into play. Um, depending on what you're selling is going to depend on which app is probably going to be the best for you. Now, the way I do it is I list all of my products, whether it be computers, uh, video game consoles, tools, uh, DVDs, you know, Blu-rays, whatever have you. I list them on all of the platforms because I want to reach the biggest audience that I possibly can. But I will tell you this. There are certain platforms that perform better than others really important, no matter what you do, no matter what you're selling on, you must have a few things. One, you have to have really good pictures. Get yourself, you don't have a good cell phone camera. You know, my camera, I have the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. That's more than good enough for taking those kind of pictures. But if you have like one of those real cheap track phones that doesn't have a good camera, get yourself a good secondhand uh, digital camera. Make sure your lighting is very good. You want to take the best possible pictures that you can. I know some people that go as far as to buy those little whiteboards. Um, I'm not exactly sure the technical term for it. Basically, it's like a white surround with a light on top, and it makes them look really, really professional. And that gets usually the best results. But if you, you don't even have to go that far. You can just get yourself a nice camera, make sure that you have good lighting, and you take plenty of pictures. Now, Craigslist, um, you could take up to 24, I think almost either 24 to 30 pictures now. I know they change that from time to time. Um, however, if, when you look at uh, apps like OfferUp and let go, they limit you to uh, five or six pictures. So what you want to do is get the most important pictures. Take a whole lot of pictures, whatever your product is, initially. Then what you do, you load all of them up on your computer and you choose the best five 
and six pictures that you have and make those the primary pictures. Those are the ones that you want to post on things like offer up, let go. Craigslist, you're probably, you can post all your pictures. That's fine. But you want to make sure you have the best pictures first because people are going to want to see that. Next, it is extremely important to have a very good description. I cannot tell you how many times I have been on these sites looking at a computer and it'll say Dell custom gray computer as the title and description literally says works, needs sold now, contact so-and-so. That tells me nothing. That doesn't tell me what the processor is. That doesn't tell me what the memory is. You really got to have a good description. And if you don't have a good description, you're not going to get a lot of calls or emails. Next, communication. Um, this is where it gets a little hairy. When you're selling on Craigslist, I always give my phone number. Um, generally, you're going to be contacted by local people. You will every once in a while get those scam calls. Now, you'll know they're scam calls because one, generally they'll be a, a, a long distance number. Sometimes maybe may be out of the country, so you'll see extra digits. That's the uh, country code. You guys didn't know what that is. Um, two, don't ever let people say something to the effect, um, I want to buy it and we're going to give you extra money. Just go ahead and give me your PayPal information so I can send you uh, the money through PayPal. When you're selling on any of these platforms, cash in hand only. <laughs> Let's see, cash, cash in hand, C-H, C-I-H-O, cash in hand only. You don't want to deal with money orders, credit cards, debit cards, um, anything like that. PayPal, if they're asking you to do anything like that, nine times out of 10, it is a total scam. Um, and this goes for all of them. I tend to have the best luck, and this is going to depend on your area. I tend to have the best luck selling on Craigslist and OfferUp. In my area, let go is not that great. Um, generally, you don't get a lot of very reputable people on there. Um, I'm not going to go any further now. I'm just going to say in my area, it doesn't work. Now, in your area, let go might work better than offer up. You just kind of have to test the waters. You need to go ahead and list your items on all these different platforms and uh, see where you get the best results. Oh, I'm going to take a breath here for a second. We got eight watchers and one like. That is awesome. Jeep Network asks, how many donations do you get? I don't get a lot of donations. I don't really solicit solicit donations. I just kind of do this for the fun. Um, for those of you that come here late, um, please read the uh, title because this is not one of my normal live streams. This is basically all the stuff that you need to know to get going on reselling. Basically, the title is what you need to know before selling on platforms like Craigslist, OfferUp, etc. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a break in a minute here. You guys can start asking me some of your questions specifically about, uh, about this topic. But I just want to make sure you guys know as much as I know. That way, if you're really looking to do this, and you can make a lot of extra money doing this. This is totally legitimate. People have been doing this for years now. And this is one of the things that makes the Internet so great because you can reach a huge number of people. Getting back on, on topic now, um, so let's say you've listed your item, whatever it may be, um, you know, you, you've listed it, uh, you have somebody calling you, they're, they're interested in it, and they want to come out and take a look at it. Um, this is where your detective skills need to come into work. You need to make sure that when you're talking to this person, you can get subtle hints as whether or not they're going to be a good person or a bad person. If they're saying things to you that you really don't like, like they're trying to really haggle with you over the phone, they don't have the greatest attitude, then you may want to just go and end the call and say, I appreciate your interest, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to pass on your offer, basically. Um, if they sound good, then at that point, and only at that point, um, do you want to go ahead and give them your information, like your address and, and maybe your phone number. Uh, I highly recommend only giving your phone number out to people that are um, selling things on Craigslist. If you do an offer up, let go, any of those other ones, uh, you're really supposed to do it 
do all your um, communication through the messenger app. That's actually a rule, I believe, on Leco. I'm not sure about offer up, but um, so at this point, you're going to have them coming to your house. Now, for safety reasons, I always recommend having uh, someone else there with you. Uh, generally, in my case, either my mom or my dad are here, um, but it could be your wife, your spouse, or another friend. Um, when they meet you there, be very professional. When 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 they come up to the door, um, say, hi, I'm Matt. You, you called me about the computer or whatever. And they'll say, yes, my name is so-and-so and shake their hand. And I usually, I always do that. I lead them in. Now, when I sell a product, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a computer, a game system, what have you. I always have it set up and ready for them to, to view. In my case, it's usually a computer. So I have it set up on the counter online so they can go ahead and check it out and make sure that everything works okay. There's two reasons to do that. One, it looks really good to the customer. They're looking at it and saying, hmm, this person really has faith in what he or she is selling. So um, th it, right off the bat, they are impressed. And number two, it's good for you because they're actually seeing this thing work. And there's very little chance they're going to come back later and say, oh, you sold me a bum product. It didn't work, this and that. So that's one thing I would highly recommend doing. Whatever you're selling, make sure they can test it there to see that it is working properly. Sack says, why not meet in, pub in a public place? That is a very good point. And you can do that. And I have done that in the past. Um, a lot of times when I'm selling cell phones, people want to make sure that they can uh, get it connected to their network. I'll usually meet them at one of the stores, whether it be the Verizon, at and whatever the, the cell phone is, or I'll meet them in the mall because our mall, believe it or not, actually has all those stores in them. Um, another reason you may want to meet in a public place is if you yourself feel a little leery about letting people come to your house. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I totally get that. Me personally, I, I'm a very good judge of character. I can usually tell over the phone or just by the, somebody's words whether or not they're going to be a good person. I want to deal with them. But if you're not that confident, absolutely meet in a public place if you want. A mall is a great option. Um, a gas station, if you have a gas station near your house, which I do and I'm sure a lot of you do, that's a really good option. Um, a strip mall, basically somewhere where there are a lot of people around. Elizabeth LaForte. Hi there, Matt. Finally catching another live stream with my girl, Domo. Domo. Oh, per pouring a drink to celebrate her birthday. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, I like hearing that. I like it when we can spend some quality time with our friends, family, loved ones, pets, what have you. It doesn't matter as long as they have another heartbeat. All right. Let's try to stay on topic if we can. Here's, there's a lot of information to get through. Very interesting. I see Eric Brunhammer is here. Uh, when when he worked at a company, he had permission to do that. He was allowed to set up set the computers up. That would be great. I mean, I never even thought of that in in, in your business, especially if you work for maybe a, a small family owned business and they know what you do on the side, and they're okay with that. Hey, even the better. You can conduct your own business while you're working. Now, that's a great idea. I didn't even think about that. Fry says, Billy Core is doing a live stream tomorrow. I'll have to try to catch that. I, I like his videos. He, he's pretty informative, too. I'd like to get this out to him, too, because as, as good as he is with computers, he could really be doing the same thing. And again, this is not just computers. This is anything that you want to sell. All right. There is something I wanted to uh, look at real quick. Give you guys just a couple of minutes here. Okay, this is something I want to read to you guys. When you're, this is specifically um, about Craigslist. You want to create a Craigslist account. You should actually do this first. Do not bypass a step. If you're selling stuff, particularly bigger, expensive stuff, 
It's quite common that it will not sell on the first go. By creating an account, you won't have to recreate a listing every time you refresh the post. Your account dashboard will track all of your items, allow you to edit and repost uh, when they've been deleted. Basically, what that means on Craigslist, you can post items, believe it or not, without actually having an account. But the way that you edit it and refresh it is through an email. I don't know about you, but how many times have you, I know I have inadvertently deleted an email that I needed to save. And if you delete that email, there is no way to actually control that listing. So that's a very good point. If you're selling on Craigslist, before you do anything, create an account. It's totally free and there's really no downside to actually doing that. Oh my goodness, that's a wrap. I am so glad that you mentioned this. And I'm going to go ahead and read this out loud if you don't mind. Uh, that's a wrap says, I like Facebook Marketplace. I can see the person's profile. I avoid gang members, glorified drug users, etc. Yes, and I was going to be getting to that. As of late, I have had very good success with the Facebook Marketplace. Um, for those of you, again, that don't know what it is, the Facebook Marketplace is something like Craigslist, like all the other ones, let go, offer up. But it's even better in the sense that people that are friends with you on Facebook can see the various groups. Now, the way it works on the Facebook Marketplace is there are different groups. Like usually each town, the town that you live in will have a group, but all the towns near you will also have groups. And what you have to actually do is you have to send a request to each of the groups um, with a little message asking to join and saying why you want to join, and then usually have to get approved. So unlike Craigslist and OfferUp and, and all the other ones, let go and um, Mayor C that are all free, this is free with that stipulation that you have to put a little bit more work into actually getting into these groups. So once you get into these groups, they are a great tool for selling your items because what will tend to happen is one person – and that group will buy an item. And if it's a good item, like in my case, I've sold computers on, on, on various groups. One person bought it. They told their friend. That other person came and bought a computer. And they liked it. They told their friend. And then that other person came. And you kind of see where this is going. You're building up a relationship with these people. And as long as you treat your clients and your customers right, then the sky's the limit. So yes, that's a wrap. I'm very glad that you may mentioned that about the uh, Facebook marketplace. Um, other than that, the other nice thing I like about the Facebook marketplace is it actually works through the Facebook messaging app, which I don't know about you guys, but I use that all the time on my cell phone. It's pretty much just like text messaging. So there is no downside to it at all. As a matter of fact, I actually get my Facebook message uh, messenger meh, Facebook messages faster than I get my actual text messages. Facebook Marketplace is very legit, um, and it's it's a great place to meet people. Um, I've actually been looking at maybe at putting a personal ad on there, believe it or not, because you guys at this point have probably known that uh, by now that I'm looking for my significant other, and that's another great tool. I mean, you can actually meet people that you may be interested in in pursuing a relationship with later. I mean, that's... Uh, not really the, the proper use of it, but hey, you never know. I mean, you always got to think positive. Absolutely. 11 watchers, two likes. All right, come on. Give me some more likes here. I know I'm giving you guys some good information. And go ahead and please answer. ask me the questions. That's what I'm here for. Okay, just just adjusting the microphone real quick. So I think somebody said they were having a hard time hearing me. Can you guys hear me a little bit better now? Am I coming through clearly? Testing, testing. One, two, three. Someone tell me how I'm coming through. <laughs> All right, while well, we're waiting for that, loud and clear. All right, good. We're back then. Okay. Here's here's the other thing I want to get to. And I was actually waiting for a little bit later into, into this live stream. Um, basically because <laughs> this is so important. And that is pricing. 
whenever you price an item, again, no matter what it is, you always want to price it high. And by high, I don't mean asking $700 for your old compact Presario 9546 Pentium system, you know, Pentium 100 system. I mean, if you have a computer that's worth, say, $200, realistically, then you want to price it maybe at $240. And the reason you want to do this is people love to haggle. If you if you live in the United States and many other countries, you guys know that people love to haggle. It, it's actually a national pastime here in the United States, and I think they even like it more in other countries too. But the point is people are always going to try to lowball you. I say I list a computer that I know is worth about $200. I'll inevitably list it for $240. Somebody will come back at me and say, I'll give you $160. And I'll say, well, I'm really looking to get a little bit more. How about we settle at $200? And they'll usually say, okay. And that's what haggling is. You don't do that. If you go to a store, you're not going to you're not going to go to your local grocery store and, and go up to the counter after you picked up all your produce and say, here's a bag of grapes. You said it rings up at $3.25. Let's call it $3 even. You're not going to do that because that, that won't do it. But on a secondhand market, you got to think of this as kind of like a garage sale. People are going to haggle you on price. It's just going to happen. Every once in a while, you might get that person that likes the price or doesn't know to handle, but I'd say 60 to 70% of the time, they're going to try to get the discount. So you want to have that set in place so you don't actually lose money. And that's the whole name of the game. If you're doing this, you absolutely need to be making a profit because let's face it, that's that's what we're doing. This For most of us, this is going to be a sideline something that maybe we can use to help build up the vacation fund. Let's say you want to take the family to Hawaii next year. Well, heck, that's going to cost you what? Maybe five, six grand. It can be done. I, I, I kid you not. Working part-time at this, maybe, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 hours a week, you can make fifteen to $20,000 a year doing this. You really can. I'm not trying to be like all those people out there saying you're become a, a millionaire with doing practically nothing. It's not true. It's hard work, just like anything else in life. But it is rewarding in the end to see what your fruits have accomplished, if you know what I mean. Good. I'm glad everybody can hear me right now. Okay. The next thing I want to touch on is uh, delivery versus having uh, whoever is interested in your item come and pick it up. If at all possible, you want them to come to you. Um, very, very rarely will I actually deliver a product. Um, it's not because I'm worried that the person might try to rob me. It's not because I'm worried that you know I'm not going to make the sale. It's mainly because most of the time, I don't need to deliver it. Generally, when I'm selling something on one of these platforms like a computer, I have multiple offers within the first uh, few days. And generally, most people, I would say about 60 to 70% of the people have no problem coming to me and picking it up. That 30% that wants me to deliver it to them, it's just not worth the fuss to me. I deal... Now, you guys might feel differently. If you're doing this really small time, like only selling one or two things a month, and you really want to deliver it to them, I don't want to dissuade you from that. You can do it. Just, again, follow the safety rules. Meet in a public place. If you're going to their house, make sure that you have someone else with you. You know, be smart about it. But for me, I just find that I don't need to... Um, to deliver products. I, I'll be honest with you. And it's just, my time is very valuable. And because I have all those multiple offers and I'll give you a good example. Uh, about a week or two ago, I had a computer for sale listed at $220. Um, I had somebody offer me the full price, $220 with the caveat that I delivered it. And it was about a 30 mile trip to deliver it. Then I had someone else that offered me $200 for it that was willing to pick it up. Well, guess what? I took the $200 offer because I know when I factor in my time, gas, wear and tear on the car, it was actually worth it for me 
to take $20 less because if I factored again all that stuff in, I'd actually be losing more money. I'd probably be making more like $180 profit. So you kind of got to think smart that way. You got to maximize what is going to make you the best profit possible. Uh, Sack said cash only. Yes, absolutely. I would not deal any other way un unless you maybe you know this person very well. I have very few, very rare occasions. Um, I've sold on the Facebook um, ma uh, Facebook Marketplace, and I've accepted PayPal from somebody that I've known and actually been friends with for a long time. But generally, it's going to be cash only. Do not do PayPal. Do not do uh, credit cards, debit cards, money orders. None of that stuff is going to be legit. Just cash. Okay. This is, again, pertaining to Craigslist mostly, but it'll also uh, spill over to let go, offer up, and the rest. It's sell your really valuable items somewhere else. For all it's awesome, this Craigslist is mostly populated with folks looking for a deal. You can sell your original Barcelona chairs. <laughs> Barcelona chairs, never heard of that. That's a new one on me. On Craigslist, but don't expect a fair price. Craigslist is all about convenience and providing maximum reach in a particular region. eBay, which taps the international buyer, is a far better bet for getting a fair price on your value on your very valuable items. I agree with that statement to a point. Um, the more the the how can I say this? The wider the audience you have, the better luck you're going to have at getting a top price. However. I have found that certain people locally are willing to pay up, especially on Craigslist and the Facebook marketplace. Um, in my area, the ones that are usually try to get you to give them a bargain price are on let go. Again, your area may vary. In your area, let go might be better than Facebook marketplace or offer up. That's why I said before, you kind of have to just test the waters. You need to list your, I would start with one item. Let's say you have an old cell phone that you, you need to get rid of. This is your old cell phone, okay? You've unlocked it. You have did a factory reset, so it's basically like new. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to list this on all of those apps. Same price, same title, same description. And let it sit there for a few days. Let the offers come in. And find out which one works best for you and which one is most trouble-free. Just because somebody offers you a specific price for that item doesn't mean that that's going to be the most trouble-free offer. You might find that another person, say someone offered you, say you had a list for $140. Somebody offered you $120 on OfferUp. Another person offered you $110 on Craigslist. Well, maybe that $120 offer, they want you to deliver it. They want you to meet them at a specific time. Whereas that person that offered you $110 on Craigslist is willing to come and pick it up that day. Well, in that case, you're better off selling that to them on Craigslist, taking $10 less because they're not going to be wasting your time. Do that with a few different types of items and you will actually learn um, what apps work best for you in your area. Chris Bartlett, we have Gumtree in Australia. I have heard of Gumtree, pretty much like Craigslist. I've used that a few times buying stuff. We don't have Craigslist here. Yeah, um, there's a few different ones. Gumtree, I think, is Australia, and I think it's in um, the UK, in other words, England. And Canada has Kijiji is, is the one in Canada. But for those of you internationally, this, this applies as well. Um, Elizabeth Laforte would love to see more sometime. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I missed that other comment there. Hey, was flipping through old videos recently. Whatever happened to the resilient connection? Wow, you are going back a ways. Um, basically, the two people I was going to do that with, um, 
well, the one, we kind of had a little bit of a falling out, but the other, he uh, got a new job and he's just been way too busy. I would like to see that uh, get back together too, because I think that would have been a great um, group project if it had worked out. Unfortunately, it, it didn't. So we'll have to see what happens. Never say never. Never say never. Okay, it looks like the feed went out for a minute. You got on my back, you guys. You guys still with me here? Okay, I'm just going to assume you guys are still there. Okay, I'm back. Good. All right, there is another one that uh that i want to read and this is kind of a funny one this is uh number 10 uh use common sense don't meet alone in the woods to meet your potential buyer except cash now this is interesting this was cash or money order only i am going to strike money order i'm uh, i'm going to say except cash only um use your email address don't give any more info than you have to and that's very important now, on Craigslist, most people expect you to give them your phone number. I find that that's okay. I don't have any issues with that. Um, but if they're if they're conversing with you through email, then there's no need to give your phone number for the most part because most people have a smartphone and can, on the go, still get messages via email or the Facebook Messenger app. Okay. All right. Chris Bartlett is back with me. Uh, I guess, I, I guess it might've been on your end, buddy. I, I don't know what happened. Everybody else said they're, they've been with me, but it happens. We all have issues. Awesome. Well, go ahead and start asking me some more questions. Okay, here we go. That's a wrap. No refunds in most States. All deals are final. Once the money exchanges hands. That's correct. Um, when you're selling, reselling like this, it is as is where it is. Now, that being said, um, if you bought, if, if you sold something to somebody, in my case, it would be a computer. There have been times that I've sold a computer and a week or two weeks out, they call me and say, hey, Matt, the computer stopped working. I personally feel obligated. Most time I'll say, okay, bring the computer back over. I'll take a look at it. And generally I can get it up and running within an hour or two and I won't charge them for that. Now on the other side of it, let's say they bought the item from you. Again, I'm going to use a computer. And for my example, um, a month or two has gone by and they say, well, I just got around to hooking it up and I'm having issues with it. Can I bring it back and give me a refund? Absolutely not. Generally, I won't even give a refund. I will do my best to make sure that the item is working. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm going to retract what I just said. In very, very, very rare instances where an item that I sold, usually not a computer-related item, something maybe like a video game system, if they contact me the next day and they say um, it's not working, I will generally give them a refund. But if it's something that I know was working and I know the chances are if it's not working now it was because something that they did, they're out of luck. And generally, you will find most people won't even do that. Most of the time, if you sell something on one of these platforms and you let's say you're the buyer, you go to the seller's house, you get it, you bring it home, you know, it works for a few days, then it conks out you're out of luck. There's really no recourse on there. So what I'm going to let you guys take away from that is, and I hope you take this away, be very, very careful when buying things this way. And this is not just a, an informational video on how to sell. It's going to be also how to buy as well. Take your time there, test it, make sure it, it's fully functional. Remember, you are the buyer, but you are absolutely not obligated to buy that item from the seller. If you think something smells funny if you don't think this is everything they say it is walk away you absolutely have that right to walk away oh boy my chat window went away oh, i didn't think we were going to have this problem again ah there we go it's coming back 
All right, so we got 11 watchers and 7 likes. Let's see if you guys got any, uh, any good questions for me. Remember, there are no such things as stupid questions. Don't be afraid. Ask me whatever you want about this, because if you're thinking about doing this part-time, um, you guys can pick my brain. I will give you my vast knowledge on this subject, because I have been doing this for many years now. I have seen all types from all walks of life come by and try to buy things from me. And generally, if you give me a situation, I can tell you how to handle it, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff. Oh. Mouse froze up on me. Jeep Network, do I sell services on let go? No, I do not sell services on let go. Occasionally, I will advertise my services on Craigslist. Um, but the other ones, I, I, I tried it once and I really didn't get a good response. So generally, uh, no. And the main reason is when I list these computers for sale, believe it or not, when I make the sale, that person... I usually become their computer tech. So I find I only really need to do it. I've actually gotten a lot of business that way. I want to share something with you guys here. How do I want to do this? Okay, here we go. I want to show you guys an example of a, a listing that I did for a computer. Hopefully that hopefully that share is okay. And it looks like I have exceeded the maximum allowed. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm going to refer everybody to what I just shared. Uh, this is a listing that I have for a computer. And go ahead and take a look at it, and I'll show you exactly how I list it. The first thing I list is the processor. In this case, an AMD E300 dual-core APU running at uh, 1.3 gigahertz per core. Put in the amount of memory. This has 8 gigs of RAM and the hard drive. This particular one has a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And I list all the other pertinent information. The fact that it has a DVD burner, a wireless end card, and then I list what the operating system is. In this case... Fresh installed Windows 10 Home, and this also has Office uh, 2007 installed on it. So that takes care of the hardware in the computer and the software, the, the pertinent software. Next, I list the monitor. In this case, I paired it with a 24-inch uh, LCD monitor, keyboard, mouse, and stereo speakers. This is nice. This is a good example of an ad that somebody is going to read and actually respond to because there's enough information there for them to make an informed decision to whether or not this is the proper item for them, but not too much as for them to not want to read it and move on to the next ad because a lot of times that'll happen. I will actually get people, and this, is, this annoys me more than anything, somebody will list a computer on Craigslist, for example. And what they'll do is they'll actually go, let's say it, it's an HP Pavilion 9510. They'll go search that on, do, do a Google search for it, and they'll find um, the spec sheet for it. And they will copy that down word for word, copy and paste that into the ad. Generally, the spec sheet is three, four, maybe five pages long. I don't know about you. I'm not going to sit there and read that. I really don't care if it has a, 933 megahertz bus, um, where it was sold originally, how much how much it sold at Best Buy in 2008 for that kind of amount of money. I don't care. I want to know the pertinent information. I want to know what the computer has so I know what I can do with it. And people in this day and age have very short attention spans. The more 
I'm going to rephrase this, less is more. But you want to make sure you get out the information that people need so they can make that informed decision. Eric Brunhauer will be right back. He's got to reboot his laptop. <laughs> this is so funny. Your mouse stopped working. So did mine. I have this um, Logitech, Logitech G7 mouse, which I've had for years. Still works okay, but every once in a while it loses connection. Fry asked, is Craigslist bad? No, Craigslist is not bad. Craigslist, you have to be smart when dealing with any of these. But is Craigslist bad? Absolutely not. I've made a great side business out of Craigslist and the other apps as well. All right. I'm going to get to answer a few more questions, then we're going to go ahead and wrap this up because I literally forgot to bring my water up here and my voice is getting hoarse. <coughs> oh, I tell you, I tell you, this is crazy. I will interject a little something here. I can't wait until fall. Fall has still not hit us. We've been in the 80s, high 80s, low 90s for temperatures. So all my exercise I've actually been doing inside recently. So I'd interject a little of that into here while we're waiting for more uh, questions. I know somebody's going to ask this. If you want to know what I did, steps today. There you go. 20,926 for steps. 8.91 miles. Average of 2.8 miles an hour. Oh, Chris Bartlett said it's cold in Adelaide. I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry, but I'm glad it's cold where you are. I welcome the cold weather here now. Believe me. That's a wrap. I miss the Craigslist personal ads. All good things must come to an end, as they say. Uh, Yeah. There were some really sketchy ads on there, though, and I think that's why they had to put it to an end. Um, I, I tried searching on there, but most of them just scared me, to be honest with you. I remember people talking about how they had bad relationships. They were looking for somebody that will um, take care of them, which is code word for basically be their sugar daddy or sugar mama. Now, I'd much rather find my, um, my significant other in church or maybe going to like a singles dance or something like that. Jamie wrote, have you encountered someone who tried to lower the price by not bringing exact cash amounts? I have, and luckily I was at a store and made the person get the exact amount. Yes, I have. Um, it's rare, but it does happen. Um, in that case, you have two options. Either you can accept the amount that they brought, or you can make them go get the, uh, the amount of cash that they need. Now, I will say something that's kind of interesting. People will use that as a bargaining tactic. Generally, if somebody's trying to do that, they will have that cash somewhere. Um, so what I would suggest doing in that, in that case is if you're willing to take the lower amount and you're not really worried about it, just say, yeah, fine, I'll take that. But if not, just try this, say, um, you know what, I really need to have that extra 20 or $30 that we discussed. And, um, I'll just have to wait for the next person. Cause ch if you do that, chances are, they're going to walk right out to their car and come right back magically of having found that extra 20 or $30. Believe me, it'll happen. And I'm not going to be ashamed to admit in years past, I've tried the same technique with, on people. I know, shame on me, right? But that's just the way it is. It, it, that's the way it works sometimes. People try to get the absolute best price they possibly can. Uh, it looks like Eric Brunhammer decided to buy a new laptop. Definitely do a review of that. I'm still waiting for the review of your new truck. So I got two for if you upload those two videos, you definitely have someone that's going to watch them. 56 degrees in D.C. right now, Elizabeth Laforte said, frigid in comparison to what we've been experiencing. Send some of that down here, please. It is just way too hot for uh, the end of September. Uh, all right. All right, tubers, a couple more questions. I'm going to let everything go. All 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Eric. I misread that. He was saying the laptop he has is on its way out. Might need to see me for a new one. Uh, I'll try to get some in. I have no idea. Laptops are so hard to come by. I can get pretty much as many desktops as I want, but good quality used laptops are very scarce right now. I'm hoping to uh, find another business that's liquidating and maybe get some more in. Yes, mom and dad are back from New York, and the kitties are doing just great. They're both in here. Milo is on the bed, and Baxter's up on the couch. Let me see if I can uh, get one of them over here. Come on, Baxter. Come on, Mr. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Let you guys see Mr. Baxter real quick. Want to say hi, bud? Say hi, buddy. Oh, look, he's waving to you. He's waving to you guys out there. He just woke up from his little nap. Isn't he cute? Come on, guys. You got to give me some more likes. I showed you Baxter. Let Baxter know that you like him. Isn't he a cute kitty? Come on. Somebody hit that like button for me. Oh, we got two likes, Baxter. There you go. Say thank you. Thank you, Baxty. Good boy. <laughs> Nine likes. We got three more likes. Awesome. I don't mean to get off topic, but I know you guys love to see my, my two kitties. Sorry, Scott. I can't let you take Baxter. He's my kitty. Actually, literally only my cat. He doesn't have anything, he doesn't have anything to do with mom or dad. Loves being here. Yes, you do. It's amazing how many likes I get when I show these these guys. I'm not going to bring Milo over. He's fast asleep on my bed. There we go, bud. Oh. Sometimes he'll stay like this, but neither of them really like to be held for any length of time. Fry asked what happened to Simon. Simon passed away a couple of years ago. We uh, we had to put him to sleep a couple of years ago. But that's okay. I miss him. But it's always good to get new friends. What you doing, buddy? You're a good cat. Fun fact, before I end this live stream, if you want to make your cat really, really happy, blink at him really slow like this. Kind of mesmerizes him. Though right now we heard the AC kick off and his uh, attention is elsewhere. You want me to let you down? No, seems pretty content right now. <laughs> Look how fast kitties have derailed the topic. Yeah, let's face it. They always do. It's cuteness overload. Okay, Baxter wants down. I have to watch it because a long time ago I was holding him sitting in this chair like this without my shirt, and he went and actually scratched my stomach, and it's actually still healing. The scar is still there, believe it or not. <sighs> Crazy cats. All right, tubers, a uh, couple more questions. I'll, I'll let it go for a few more minutes if you guys have any more questions. Remember, getting back on topic. What you need to know before selling on Craigslist, offer up, let go, mer uh, mercy, what have you. No more cat questions. Let's let's try to stay on topic here. Doesn't look like we have too many more questions here. Yeah, not too bad. We had about peak of about 13 watchers. Not too bad for one that wasn't announced. And, you know, I just, I figured let's go ahead and give it a try just to, um, just to see what, what happens. Scott. Okay. I will answer this because I've had a lot of questions about this. Uh, Scott Kelly, want to know, have you ever found, have I ever found myself another car? No, I haven't yet. And to be honest with you, I'm not in a rush to do it because the reason I'm getting it is I'm thinking about doing Amazon delivery driving. 
and I'm on the waiting list for that. So I'm going to wait around till the, uh, till the best car comes along. I am looking at a few different types of cars. I mean, I'm looking at possibly the PT Cruiser. Yes, the PT Cruiser is still on, on my radar. Even though it's not the greatest car, they're cheap, and they're also cheap to repair. I'm um, looking at maybe a Ford Focus. Also possibly looking at one of the Volkswagens. Um, maybe, you know, I, I'm trying to stay away from the Japanese cars because I just don't know a lot about them. And if I need to get them fixed, they are a little bit more expensive to fix. But we'll see what happens. That's that's going to be in the future. All right, tubers, it's almost 8 o'clock. I am exhausted at this point. Hope you guys gave you guys some really good information. I will try to answer uh, more of these questions in post-production if I possibly can. Please continue to like and subscribe. Remember, stay safe when you're selling out there. This is your best friend. Be smart and you'll be safe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.